Well, thanks for coming down. It's a private class on a smoky, nasty day. Uh, we're supposed to probably be inside today, so we'll do this real quick and uh, get to get you out of here. But uh, we see the familiar faces, I think, in here. I'm Trevor, our general manager. Is it first time class here? First time? Nice. Uh, um, we got one more coming in. Sheets are right at the back if you need to grab an information sheet. Um, we always have it online. Um, if you want to download it later, you can grab and grab you a copy anytime. Uh, we do record this. You saw me press record, so if you're not tired of listening to me, you can go back and watch it again. It'll be up on YouTube sometime tomorrow. We uh, do a little editing and then have it up there for reference for later. So uh, We'll go kind of fast and furious, but I kind of always start with a few honest disclaimers about me. I don't want to make anybody feel bad. What you choose to do with your grass is your own business. I'm not trying to stand on the soapbox and preach, but uh, number one, I'm very OCD, so I love my grass. Uh, no one will ever talk me into getting rid of my grass. Um, and I'm an organic guy, so I use no chemical whatsoever on my yard. Organic food, organic solutions, organic everything. So it can be done. Um, you may choose to use a few of those things. That's up to you. I'll hopefully talk you into trying some uh, organic goodies today. But uh, we're, I'm an anti-weed and feed guy. Is probably the one thing I think should be banned from Earth. Um, that is nasty stuff. Um, if you can avoid using it, there's better ways to go, even if you're going to use a, a chemical. We'll talk about that a little bit in the weed control part of the class. But um, there's options out there to spot spray, do some other things, and not broadcast murder that's kill over the whole grass area when you probably don't need to with the, with the weed and feed. So uh, there's two. Um, you know, my big thing with this class is that we put a little bit of work in here in the fall. We, I do this class again in March every year. You can enjoy your summer and not have to do much work in the, on the lawn part of the yard. So um, if we get ahead here a little bit in fall, we do the same thing in the spring. You're going to have much nicer turf year-round. Nobody wants to come home in November and have slippery mud and dead grass everywhere and not much of a lawn. It just causes other issues around. Uh, my wife would kill me if I was tracking mud in the, uh, in the house all winter long. So um, you can have a nice lawn. You know, Maybe you let it go brown this summer. Save the water bill, great. You know that's that's a choice you make. That's fine. Grass is a really resilient creature. If you watch different shows, it gets burnt, it gets flooded, it gets trampled, it gets eaten, and what happens? Grass comes back. So um, chances are, even if you let it go brown, um, it'll start to rejuvenate here this fall, and you'll get get the turf back at some point once we start getting some some regular rain. Okay. Um, so this is kind of the time. You know, do you have to run home and do this today? You know, probably not. You know, I'd recommend you don't run home and do a bunch of physical work with a smoke count. Do you have to do it tomorrow, next week? You know, no, no, and no. But at some time here, you know, in the month of September, early October is prime time to get this little project done for fall. You're gonna have rain coming. You know, I would not go home, run home, and try to oversee and do some of the things we'll talk about until we get some regular rain. Nothing's worse than doing all this work you leave town for a weekend, you're gone for a few days, the sun's still out later September, it cooks the seed and you've got nothing to grow and you got to do it again. So wait until we get some regular rain. Maybe you've got a sprinkler system and you can push go, you know, kind of keep it slightly moist here on the few sunny days we get later in the fall. But soil temperature's warm. I hate to remind you we got rain coming here all through the fall, winter, so it's a great time to, to get the grass seed going. It'll grow pretty fast. Um, I'm going to kind of follow this handout uh, that I made this years ago and I tweak it every year with a little bit of new products and a couple new tips I might find, but it really doesn't change. Um, my, big, my big thing with homeowners, typically the first thing they do is go for a bag of lawn food. And is that the end of the world? You know, probably not. But if you follow this process, you're going to cut your workload down and you're not going to have to do things twice. Um, you know, number one to me is I want to get the junk I don't want out of my lawn before I put lawn food down. I don't want moss, I don't want weeds. I want to get that taken care of before I put my lawn food down, whether it's, it's spring or fall. Um, moss control is always number one for me. Now do most of us have a lot of moss in the fall? You know, probably not. You know, I'm not sure what your condition your turf's in. In spring, that would absolutely be the first thing I would do. But if you have moss, we've got to get the moss treated to start with. We want moss in there. It'll take up the lawn food and it'll win over grass. As we get wetter and cooler, moss will get more prominent here in the fall. So if you have areas that are moss, let's get them treated. You know, we've got two choices. Um, this is the iron, you know, really easy, cheap iron. 
I could put this in a broadcast spreader. You know, I could just go along my turf. Iron's going to turn your grass a little darker green. But we're not going to have, um, you know, we, we just want to be careful with staining. Want to make sure that's clear. If I got patio, wood, concrete, if I get these pellets and I go crazy with the spreader and I just sits on a walkway or something, I'm going to have orange stains from that iron that's in this. So be really careful where you, where you put it down. We don't put this in our beds. We don't put it on our roof. Nothing like that at all. Just the lawn area. So it's very cheap. You know, if you've got a big turf area, this is probably the most cost effective way to go where you can use part of it this fall, part of it in spring. Um, you know, again, I don't know that everybody's, um, I don't have hardly any moss anywhere and I probably won't worry about that in my own yard here in the fall, but I absolutely will be doing this coming out of winter to start spring out. So that, you know, we can't call that organic. There's nothing chemical about iron. It's just natural ferrous iron sulfate. So it's not a chemical type product, but we don't call that organic, you know, per se. If you want the natural option, this is a liquid food, same brand name, Moss Max from Bonide, but this is a potassium soap. So if I spray this down on my turf, I can use this on my walkway, my boat, my RV, my fence, anywhere I want. This will not stain. It doesn't go as far, it's a little bit more expensive, but this would be the natural way to go. This is what I put on my roof um, typically once a year, and when I go spray in the spring, the shadier, wetter areas, this is what I'll treat with. This will always kind of turn your moss black, you know, pretty quickly if you've used an iron product before. I can rake it out, remove it very easily. This will go straw color. It's a little bit different um, if you're used to the black. So if I kill my moss, same thing, just a day later, I'm gonna have that straw yellow that I can again rake out really quickly and, and get it out of the lawn, okay? So if we get moss out of there, you know, it's kind of phase one. We don't want to feed the moss here with our first dose of lawn food. So let's get moss out. Second would be weeds. You know, and I don't know, you know, some people like a little weeds on the lawn. Again, it's your lawn. Um, I keep mine pretty weed free. Um, I might have four or five right now on all three of my lawns, but I keep up on it in the spring, which means I don't get a lot of weeds to germinate in the summer. You've got a lot of different options. You know, hey, I mentioned weed and feeds. I'm not a weed and feed guy. It's not something Sunnyside's ever going to carry here. Um, if you're going to go the chemical herbicide route, like a weed and feed, I would have rather have you come by the liquid chemical spray because I can walk out and spot spray here and there just where I need it. And I'm not, I'm not putting it out, you know, over a 5,000 square foot area and using a bunch of chemical I probably didn't need. So these are all very effective herbicides. I'll kind of show you the, the few options we have. Now, I teach a weed class, a specific weed class every spring. And we talk a little bit about post-emergent or pre-emergent. You guys kind of know what I mean when I say that. If I've got a weed already growing in the grass, I have to get a post-emergent spray. If I'm trying to keep weeds from growing, period, I get something pre-emergent and kind of put down as a preemptive strike that they can't grow through. So our options are very simple for lawn. You know, this is the weed half of the weed and feed. And I don't know that I'll keep carrying this long term, but this is for like your golf course quality lawn. You know, if I'm looking for the highest end product I can find that kills weeds that are existing and acts as a pre-emergent, this is something I could do in the fall. This is something I, I could do in the spring. Those are the two best times of year. Just be careful because when we say pre-emergent, that keeps seeds from germinating through that layer. So what's gonna happen if you go back and overseed your lawn the lawn's not going to grow either so be really careful when you use that and if you do you got to do your seeding now and then do this it's about three months that'll keep anything from growing so you got to be real careful to maybe you get the seed to grow first and then do this but that would be the one chemical bag there's nothing natural about that that would do a huge amount of weeds and some annual grasses that's a, that's probably the kicker with that one um, where you could kill out some of those annual type grasses that are infesting our perennial lawns, okay? So that's weed beater complete. Now, if I go to a, a liquid form, which again, this is what I would choose to do, you know, if I could recommend something for you. Um, I use this. This is a bottle that's out of my garage all the time. This is, you can see the Captain Jacks is the kind of natural logo for everything Bonide. So this is a natural iron-based weed killer. It works very well for me. I've been using it for years, and I, I have a bottle like this probably last me three years. 
where I can just pull it out. I don't know battery, I don't have to mix anything, hook my sprayer on here and I can walk around and just get the few dandelions or the couple plants that are growing I don't want. So the iron is no chemical. This is pet safe, people safe, all the rest of that stuff. Um, but I have to spot spray and I keep up on it. Don't let things go to seed. I'll tell you the two things it will not do is clover and it doesn't do oxalis. So if you've got clover patches or oxalis is a little fine, kind of looks like a little mini clover. That one I get the pruner blade out or a little hoary hoary and I pop those out of the grass before they start taking off. Does it, does it do anything for, um, for horses? Tails. No horsetail, no butter. Yeah, well, we're gonna do that in a second. So, okay. <laughs> so th this is your natural option. So, they used to be called Weed Beater FE. I think they're rebranding everything. This is the first year, so we call this Lawn Weed Brew. It's got a great name. But the biggest thing is, when I look at products, if I see a tan shoulder, that means that's natural. I don't have any systemic or chemical in there at all. Okay, so that's phase one. You can buy it in the RTU. Maybe you've got a big lawn, you like mixing your own spray, I've done this before as well. You can buy it at a concentrate, you can buy a little trigger bottle if you've got a small lawn and just need to do a little bit and you don't want to mix it at all. But that's the natural way. If we go the three chemical route, and I, we carry three here at this point, I'll kind of show you which, which one's which. So depending on how red in the face you are with your weeds, we'll go up in strength. How's that? So Weed Beater Ultra. Okay, is choice number one. Now this is one that's been around for years. Maybe you uh, shop at some of the chain stores. Ortho's had a product out for years called We 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 Be Gone. Maybe somebody's seen that at some of the chain stores. This would be similar to that, but a little different configuration where this works in cooler temperatures. And I think that's huge in our area because again, I'd rather have you get up on the weeds now, not let them germinate all winter into early spring and now we got 10 times the mess next year. So I can use this down to about 45 degrees. So I think this is the superior spot spray to use in our area, you know, for that fall to early springtime when I can get some of those weeds killed very easily. Now this is non-selective. It will not hurt your grass, period. Okay, so it doesn't kill any grasses, but clover, dandelion, any other weed, this is a particular way to go that'll take care of most all that. Now horsetail buttercup we'll get to in a second because that's a little different but this will take care of the vast majority of weeds for most people. Now keep in mind, I look at the price on that and I'm like, wow, 36 bucks for that pint. A, this makes a bazillion, and B, this is literally like 40,000 square feet of herbicide. So if you've got a typical homeowner lawn, you're buying a bottle of this and you're gonna mix it up two, three, four times a year, this is gonna last you for years. This isn't like, oh my God, I just spent 36 bucks to spray weeds on my turf. This is a lot of spray. A concentrate okay so we beater ultra is kind of phase one phase two would be sedgender and this is kind of a specialty one again a little bit more like this where I take care of everything that weed beaters done but I also get some harder stuff like buttercup some horsetail sedges a lot of the native stuff if you live out maybe towards the green belts and you have a lot of those native sedgy rush type grasses with much stiffer blades coming into your lawn this will take care of those but again not hurt your perennial lawn so that's kind of phase two is sedgender and then the last one is always fun to talk about because this is one you wouldn't think but this is brush killer okay so this is at the top end of the herbicide level if i'm killing blackberry if i want bamboo i want really hard to kill stuff i'm using this but if you look at the label and the very small print here says works great on lawns. I told them to make the, make the label bigger because this is going to be your horsetail, your blackberry, your buttercup, all the really hard stuff and all the easy stuff all in one. This does not hurt grass. It sounds funny, but brush killer is not going to kill any kind of grass, but it's going to kill anything else but that. So be really careful with all of these products. If I'm in a typical landscape like mine, I've got lawn and I've got flower beds and shrubs and everything in the yard. If I'm out there just daydreaming and, and oh yeah, it's fine and it's windy and I'm not paying attention, you get that spray on your peony, your ground cover, your rose, whatever it is, you're going to burn it with herbicide. So be really careful where you, where, how you spray. Always try, you know, not wind is, is a, is a no-no. If I walk out there and you've got a stiff wind blowing, skip it and do another day. I need dry. It doesn't mean I need to be 80 degrees and dry for a week. It needs, I mean, a couple hours 
for this to dry on. These labels are going to tell you right on there, rainproof in an hour, rainproof in two hours. They work very quickly to soak in. And it's a great time of year again if you're going to spray that we have actively growing plants. We're not going to have much luck in December, January, February, and all those winter months. We have to wait and do this later in March and April next year. Okay? So any questions on herbicide? Yeah. What about for the little plants that grow up in the cracks in the driveway? Yep. So we can use again, um, you want to be careful, the natural weed killer, again, this has iron, so I'm not going to use this in my driveway, pathway, a rock, anything like that, or I'll stain it a little bit. Um, the same brand name, there's another product in there just called Deadweed Brew that's not for lawns. That's a natural herbicide that works great. I use that all over my gravel driveways, pathways, all the stuff at my house. I don't stain, and again, I'm not using a harsh chemical like glyphosate, Roundup. We don't carry any of that stuff anymore, too. We've used white vinegar in the past. Vinegar works okay. Um, I've had some people have good luck with it, others not as much. Um, you know, there's blow torches. Those are all kinds of fun <laughs> stuff you can try. But, um, you know, I, it, again, if you're going to go, you know, and again, I'm not trying to tell you you have to. If you're going to go the natural route, um, look at that, that dead weed brew in there. Um, I've been really happy with the results. I mean, even clover, oxalis, it, it smells very strong, like clovey, garlicky, it's all natural stuff. And he, my wife knows when she comes home, well, you sprayed the driveway today. It was like, yeah, I did it. I'm used to it. I think it smells kind of good, but it's strong for a day and then it's gone, you know, but you, I can walk out in 20 minutes and go, oh my, yeah, that's working great. You can watch those weeds shriveling right up. Yeah. So the, the restriction on uh, being able to plant grass afterwards, like in the bag, yeah. that's, that's not on the three bottles you should have no, not at all. I mean, again, if, if I'm going to spray weeds, you know, give it a week. You know, that's plenty. You know, I don't want to I don't want to put seed down and spray herbicide. I did, you know, probably not going to get it all, but you don't want to take a chance of that. So maybe you, you know, that and that's again, we're kind of following that process. I want moss out. I treat my weeds. I wait a few days. I see them all shrivel up. I clean up that mess. And now I'm to the seed, the food and all the fun stuff here pretty quick. So so try to get rid of them anyway first and then, then you can start over again. Okay, so weed control, uh, we kind of did that. The one thing I didn't bring in here that we do carry and I use on occasion um, is corn gluten. Has anyone tried corn gluten yet? Um, that is the one certified organic pre-emergent herbicide and frankly it turns into fertilizer when it breaks down. Um, it has gone way up in price um, thanks to biodiesel mainly because they're using up all the raw ingredients. Um, it works great. Again, it's not going to do anything for a weed that's growing. I want to make sure that's perfectly clear. And I can't put seed down if I put corn gluten down as my food in the fall or spring. But if you don't need to overseed, you want to try something for a season, you know, like over the winter, we do it again in spring, that would keep some things from even growing in the first place. Corn gluten, you buy it by the bag. We've got some in the store and that, that works pretty well. I use that on all. Anytime I mulch my beds, I sprinkle corn gluten out, put the put the compost or, or mulch right over the top of it, and that really helps keep the weeds down a little bit. But again, it's a you know three, four, maybe five month thing. It's not you know once a year. You're gonna have to do it spring, fall, spring, fall if we're, if we're gonna go the go the natural route. Okay. Um, so now we've got we moss out, weeds out, and we're kind of heading towards some questions. You know that I probably can't answer for you unless you bring me a sample of your grass or we play 20 questions and that's thatching and aerating. Has everyone done thatch or aerate over the years? Do we know what we're talking about a little bit? Um, you know, I don't, we'll start with aerating and I've never aerated my yard in 20 years after I redid my soil. Um, I have not had to, I've got great drainage. I don't have compaction. Um, I can't tell you whether to aerate or not. The golf courses do it every year, twice a year. They want perfect drainage. You know, and they're going to add sand, which I would never do in a homeowner's yard. You don't need sand, you need compost. Um, I would ask you this, if you tried to keep your lawn green this entire summer, you put water on it, were you still having it go brown and rock hard? If that's the case, yeah, you know what, maybe this fall or next spring, we have somebody come aerate it for us, we do some plug filling, or we have a company come do it, or we go rent the machine and do it ourselves. maybe you could... Um, get some benefit from that. Um, I think sometimes on sunny sloped yards perhaps, um, or again, if you've got the typical yard with that much good soil, and then we have nothing but useless hard pan or rock underneath that, 
maybe aerating might help you get some fresh space for, for some fresh grass roots going, okay? But aerating is going to make a mess. We always rake up the plugs. Don't leave them on the ground. You're going to end up with a, a bumpy, uneven yard if you do that. You want to get those root plugs raked out of there when we're done and fill the holes. I see a lot of people in Everett where I live take the time to aerate and just walk away. And it's like, well, if you rake that up real quick and got rid of all the plugs, brought in some compost or some topsoil, raked it out to fill all those holes, now you're in business. You're going to see a huge, like a brand new lawn again that next season when it grows in, okay? Now, thatching is something I absolutely would do. Um, and I do that religiously at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. Um, a little bit of this has to do with what your choice is as far as lawnmower. Who recycles their clippings? When I say that, you don't bag them. You just leave them on the ground. Does anyone do that? You do a little bit? Yeah, see, I do about half and half. It, you know, if you do that, it's a great thing. You know, the, the, the websites, the county, the city, they'll tell you, leave your clippings down. Yes, it turns into fertilizer. Yes, it helps with a little less water in the dry season but the problem is is you're you're creating a thatch layer and that just continues to build up on your soil surface that is where i get disease issues here in the wet months um, and at some point i want to get it out of there whatever's decomposed and help my grass great you did that all year long i tend to do mine in spring you know i let it sit for the winter and do it in spring you could consider it in the fall if you haven't done it either but when i power thatch you make a mess. If we were doing a slideshow here, I'd show you pictures of when I thatch and it looks like I killed my entire yard. I mean, I got dirt, I got no grass, hardly anything to a minimum. I mean, it is mountains of debris because I'm getting rid of all the junk I don't want. Now I've got fresh game, you know, soil's ready to go, the sturdy grass that's left, I can do the fun part and I've got brand new grass. Whenever I thatch, about two weeks later, it's up, it's going. One month later, it looks like I planted a brand new lawn again for the season. So um, I rent a machine. They're not super heavy. It's a little bigger than a lawnmower. I just go down to Pilchuck here, and or the old Pilchuck, they got bought by somebody now, but but uh, Pilchuck on State Street hurts. Any of the good rental companies would, would, would rent you a Thatcher. Pretty easy to use. It takes me, like I have 2,000 square feet. It takes me like an hour, literally, to run a Thatcher over it couple hours to rake up the mess and get rid of it and then on we go to the, the fun part here in a minute so so has any have anybody thatched you got a couple no one's thatched yet you do a couple yeah it, it you know again and I'm not saying yeah everybody has to do it but I would say if you struggled with you know disease a red thread different issues in the winter months um, if you dig down there find a patch and kind of look down towards the soil if I'm pulling out a bunch of brown yellow old grass that doesn't belong it might be time to get a thatcher on there and again whether we do it here in september you know or wait and do it i'm usually like a mid-march you know first to april guy in the spring i'll do the same thing coming out of winter and then off we go for the season okay so thatching and aerating uh, just make sure you clean up your mess and don't leave it is the big part if you're going to get it done get all the debris out of there and that's probably the two biggest things you could do to kind of rejuvenate it from from scratch all right so after that's done we've got moss out weeds out We've chosen to thatch or aerate, maybe we haven't. You know, now we can kind of get to the fun part, I call it, and get the, the, the actual fun grass seed down and food and all the rest of it. So there's kind of three things with this phase. You know, when I have that mess cleaned up, I want three things. I want a good food, I want to put lime down, which I'll explain here, and then I have to look for a good seed mixture that I can overseed and then top dress it with something, okay? So first phase is lime. You know, we, we, I've tried a lot of limes over the year. This is the same one I use at my house uh, from Espoma Organics. It's a big bag of lime. Maybe you don't need the whole thing every year. Use half of it, put it in the garage, use the next half. I try to do this every spring and every fall. At least once a year, um, you would have a difference. You know, I want to make sure, you know, this is kind of a different discussion because this is not a moss killer, okay, like iron is or some things we talked about. But long story short is moss loves wet acid soil and that's exactly what we have around here especially in the winter if I can sweeten my soil with lime turf loves alkaline or sweet soil moss does not so if I use me as an example you know 20 years ago when we got our house mine was probably 90% moss coming out of every single winter okay 
Now, after doing this for a few years, and it's gotten better, it's been decade plus now, I have moss only where it should be, in these little shady corners at the edge of beds, and I don't have to do all the moss kill and the raking and the cleanup as much as I used to. So this is not a moss killer, but if I get in the habit of doing this spring, fall, spring, fall, you're going to bring the pH of your soil up just in those turf areas, you're going to have a lot less moss to, to take care of. You know, I use this, this is a great bag because it's a good price, especially with the discount today, but I've used that on my lawn and put in their vegetable garden. You got lilac trees, they love, love a little sweeter soil. Um, there's other uses for it as well, okay? So lime goes down, I adjust my pH, hopefully don't have as much moss to start with. Then I get an organic lawn food. You know, again, we don't carry anything synthetic for lawn foods here. Um, you know, no scats, none of the turf builder, all that is pretty cheap. Um, I'll just be, and again, if that's what you use, I'm not trying to offend you, but when I've tried all this stuff over the years and striped my yard and tried different foods, what worked the best? Um, I found with the synthetic foods, it looked like green as could be for two, three, four weeks, and then I'd crash, and then I'd put it down again, and then I'd crash, and I would just never end it. And I don't know who loves mowing their lawn. I mean, I kind of do, but not that much. You know, if I put down synthetic food, I'm mowing like probably three times a week, you know, for two or three weeks if I'm watering. And then I put another dose down. And it just never ends this uneven cycle. If you have a try, try organic. I mean, you could drive by my house. I'll give you my address and you can look at the color. I fed my grass once this year in the spring. I didn't even put a summer dose down because it still looks so good. I will do it again in fall for sure, but if I do this three times a year, you know, maybe it's in March, April, it's once in the summer, once in the fall, I'm going to have the same emerald green color. I don't have these huge growth spurts. I mow like once a week at the most ever, you know, and it's usually when I'm watering quite a bit in the summer and I've got the same quality and organic, pet safe, people safe, bird safe, you know, all the rest of it. So. Um, I've tried quite a few organics. Um, I think this is the finest lawn food on the market. This is EB Stone. Um, they, they're, they're, they used to just call it their green turf, but it, you can see the, the cool little boy with the little dog on there. He's happy playing in safe grass. Um, you know, this bag will do about 2,000 square feet. And this is not cheap. Organic lawn food, again, for the same reasons with the corn, is always a little, much more expensive than, you know, buying some, a cheaper synthetic food. Um, but you don't have to use it as much and I think if you penciled out the dollars you spend you know three bags of that versus maybe six of a Scots or a different synthetic you're going to spend about the same money when it comes to that uh, with the discount uh, this is one I'd highly recommend looking after class if you're like you know what I'm going to listen to them I'm going to try to go organic lawn food you know buy a couple bags or two or three and have your dose for the fall you've got it in the garage for spring it never goes bad um, and save a little bit of money that way so EB Stone is excellent. We also carry, some people have a little bit bigger area. So this is a 30 pound bag that will do up to 5,000 square feet. This is a Spomo Organics, which I, I, which I would put a close second. That's still a great lawn food. I've got some I've used at my house as well, but either one of those I think are towards the top of the food chain for, for all lawn foods, okay? Is there, you guys got any questions about the food? Is there something else you've seen or tried you're wondering about? Make it easy. All right. I got 10,000 square feet. So. Yeah. So you'd need like two big bags of this. And again, if you got a drop spreader, you know, I'm kind of OCD, so I usually put mine in a bucket and walk around and do the hand sprinkle. But if you've got a drop spreader, you'll see right on all these, all the bags up here, you have this brand of drop spreader, set it to seven, set it to two. It'll give you the numbers right on there on how to get the right dose down. Okay. So now we've got the fun part done, right? We put down lime. I sprinkled some organic food down. I can do this all at once. This is a common question. As long as I'm using organic lawn food, I will not burn seed. If I put Scott's down or a heavy nitrogen food with my new seed, you're gonna burn it all. We can't do that in the fall. So even if you are a, a Scott's user, that's fine. Get their seed starter, not regular lawn food. Because if you put that down with seed, you're gonna burn it all. It's too, too much nitrogen. So this way I'm able to do lime, that's done. Walk right back to the garage, grab the lawn food, sprinkle that down right on top of the line. Go grab my seed, which we'll do next. Put that right down with it and then top dress the whole thing. Saves a little bit of time that way. So we we package our own seed. Um, you know, I've tried a number of different brands. Um, 
pre-packaged whatever brand it is it doesn't really matter but my problem is is that none, none of it's made around here and none of it is for around here and even there's a Pacific Northwest blend I see at some places carry you know is it the end of the world you know probably not but what you want is a, is a really good mixture about 50% ryegrass 50% fescue and I want it around here to work in shade and sun I have to have both in our typical landscapes so we keep it easy we got a local place it's called Seattle Shade and Sun Mix. I mean, how easy is that? And it's specifically made for our area, Western Washington, Western Oregon, with our wet winters, our climate, our dry summers. Um, you know, is it a miraculous drought tolerant blend? You don't have to water all summer? No, you know, don't think that at all. But it's gonna be as healthy as you can get. And I think it tends to match what most people have. You know, if, you, if you've got existing lawn, I sprinkle or overseed with a Seattle Shade and Sun what's in sun's going to match and what's in shade's going to match i'm going to have a nice blend in there that will tend to t tend to be what you already have um, i know this has got two different strains of fescue two different strains of ryegrass so that way we kind of get it get a nice blend in there going with everything i've probably been 15 years in a row with that's so only seed it's what i seeded my whole lawn with years ago and it's what i continue to do a little bit of, a little bit of overseeding with okay so i've got lime down food down seed down the, the, the mistake I think most homeowners make is they walk away. You know, are, is, it some of it, is some of it gonna grow? You know, absolutely. Is all of it gonna grow? Absolutely not. We have to get it covered with something, and that's the problem around here. You get a dry day in the fall, seed dries out, you're done. You gotta go seed it again. The birds, our friends, I love birds in my yard, but what are they gonna do every morning? Oh, here's some free seed. I'm gonna hop around your yard and take half your grass seed before it even has a chance to grow. I have to cover it was something and I don't think most of the people I see do these things in the fall as I drive around I can see the seed right in the soil surface I can see all of it there and nothing's covering it so I brought in a couple options here and it's all going to be on sale uh, for the class so let's start with this if, if I have a hole you know Fido dug a hole in the yard I need to fill a patch I'm going to break my ankle I had to dig something out I need to patch it the, the lighter stuff will, will settle and it won't be level. You gotta get topsoil. So we carry an organic topsoil. You know, I'm a golfer, so we, I call that my divot mix. If I'm walking around and I gotta pull something out, I'm gonna grab a handful of that, fill that hole, stomp on it so it's nice and level. Then I can go do all this stuff right over the top, if that makes sense, okay? So just filler, never over the top of our seed. This is just to fill holes. These are my two options for seed cover. So you'll see on the, the front bag there, that's a perfect thing. We got the guy with his fancy red gloves and his red lawn mower and he's working on his lawn. You know, that is made specifically for seed cover. I mean, it can use it as a great mulch, but it's a, it's a really fine graded compost that I can, after I'm done with all this, now I walk out on my lawn and I broadcast just a dusting. I only want just like eighth of an inch, maybe quarter of an inch at the most. I'm not piling it. You don't need a lot of it. That's what I have to cover it with because that will lock the seed down, hide it from the birds. It'll keep it wet. I don't want to flood my new grass, but if it is warm, you know, the next week, the next day, I can lightly sprinkle those areas and keep them dark so I know that seed's staying wet and it'll germinate properly, okay? Is that kind of making sense? If it goes, I love that either that or the compost is the same idea. The compost is a little bit woodier but it's still fine with the lawn. It's not gonna hurt anything. You know, I tend to go compost route because I I buy five of those bales and that does my entire lawn like clockwork. Spring, fall, spring, fall, every year, five bales and that's enough to do 2,000 square feet. The, the bales will do about 400. Those bags will do about 150 to 200 if we, if we dust it properly, okay? So we don't need to get a truckload. Maybe you've got the, the 10,000, you might need either 10 of those or you'd probably be right about a yard of a good compost to do your whole place. You know, it's a little cheaper buying bulk. For me, it's easy to just pick up five bales. We always do buy four, get one free. You know, you're looking at something like 60 bucks, you know, and the whole thing's done. You know, I take them home, dump them out in my buckets, sprinkle it over, put the bag in the recycle, I'm done, you know, and then make it easy. But if I don't spread that on, and cover I'm probably gonna lose my seed again we do this in two weeks it's raining a little bit and then we get a sunny weekend like we always do here in late September and October it dries out the grass seed is gonna crash and I gotta start over again which no one wants to do this twice okay 
So try to dust it is one of the most important steps to me would be sprinkling a little bit of that seed cover over the entire thing when you're done. You're adding nutrients, the compost will work into the soil. I mean, you're improving your lawn anyway. You know, we, we, we're talking about aerating. You know, would I go spend half a fortune to buy, you know, 80 bales of that to fill up my plug hose? Probably not. You know, I'd have a company bring me a yard or two of a three-way mix or a compost blend that I could rake out, fill the holes, then do this work, and then top dress it with a little bit of compost. That would be the way to go, okay? So now we're back in business. We got our food down, we got our lime down, we got our, you know, seed cover, we've got it all ready to go. You know, if you do this in September to early October, you probably got one week, you're gonna see peach fuzz. We don't wanna mow it, we don't wanna, you know, we don't wanna stomp on it, try to keep off it as much as you can, but we're gonna see some peach fuzz in probably a week. Two weeks, we've got grass. I'll give it 30 days at the most, and you're probably gonna look out, and again, like me, I just planted a brand new lawn. It's gonna look like you just rejuvenated the whole thing, and it looks good as new again. Um, maybe before this all starts, you know, I, who leaves their lawn, you know, a little longer in the summer, you know, two inch, three inch. So, you know, for you, I tend to keep mine mowed a little tighter all the time, which is, again, not, not my choice. You don't have to. Um, if it's a little longer, probably before you start all this mess, scalp it down that one time. You know, so walk out one week and say, okay, this weekend, I'm going to work on doing the feeding and all this stuff. Let me cut a little shorter so I can access the soil a little bit easier and get, get all this work done, okay? Um, so that'll get us to there. Now, the last couple things um, we'll talk about here, you know, aren't probably for everybody. You know, there's well probably three things here. One is disease. You know, you heard me mention thatch disease, um, where we get issues that kind of fester in the wetter weather. It tends to be in the winter here, you know, fall, winter, early spring. Once we dry out, they tend to go away. Um, red thread, dollar spot, snow mold, we can go on and on. You can look up some pictures online. You can always bring, send me a picture of a close up if you're wondering if something's going on or bring a little sample of your turf and I can help you kind of get that diagnosed. Um, if I'm going to treat for disease, and I don't think you need to do that today or next week, it would probably be more like a later October, November thing or something coming out of winter. Um, I'm gonna go two different choices here. So typically, if you got a spreader, <clears throat> you don't mind doing the chemical application the one time a year. This is infused by bone eye, and this would take care of any thatch disease, period. You know, if I broadcast that out, um, it sits on the blades, it kills the spores, it gets wet, settles down with that thatch layer, it's going to eliminate the majority of, of thatch diseases that we might get, okay? Um, so that is chemical, um, it's not organic by any means. If you're going to go kind of natural route, this is what I have been using, um, and I put this on half price for the special for the class today to try to get some people to try it. But this is called Revitalize, and it sounds like it's the worst thing on earth because they call it a biofungicide, which almost sounds like nuclear. But this is very safe. This is a literally a bottle of molasses sugar with a fungus-eating bacteria in there, a bacillus strain. So if I spray this out on my rose, my vegetable garden, I use this all over the place, this is a great preventative. It's gonna kick what's in there. And if you do this a couple times, A, you'll eradicate what you have and you'll really clean your landscape up when it, when it comes to disease. So revitalize, you know, take a look at it as an option. It may be something for you if you wanna try. Um, the concentrate will cover a lot of area. You gotta mix it in a sprayer and kind of wet everything down. But here in the fall, and then again in early spring, that may be a good option for you uh, for thatch disease control if you don't want to go the, the chemical route with the granular, okay? So that's probably one half. The second half is Mr. Crane Fly. Who knows Mr. Crane Fly? I've already been squashing them with my boots as I walk around and find her. She's skimming along the lawn right now laying eggs. Those develop into larva and if you tend to have a lawn that looks pretty good and you've got big huge brown areas that just kind of keep coming. You probably got crane fly larvae in the soil. They're eating grass roots and they'll, they'll take out your lawn pretty quick. Um, I don't have any kind of organic solution for you for a crane fly. That's a really tough one. Um, I live with them a little bit. Squashing the, the, the mamas really helps if you can get them in the fall and early spring. They're usually laying eggs those two times a year. Um, but this is something I could put on my soil. 
So we would put this on a broadcast spreader. It's the one thing you want rain. I want the, I don't want this on the turf. I want it down in the soil, right? So I might do the opposite of all the rest of this and pick a wet day or that's going to rain hard. Put this out, let the water flush it into the soil, kill the crane fly larva, and then I don't get it on my shoes, my boots, my pet feet, all the rest of it kind of thing, if that makes sense, okay? So insect grub control is the way to get crane fly. Um, if you don't know if you have them or not, you know, again, don't run and buy a bottle of this because you've got a brown patch in your lawn. It may be that, it may be something totally different. Um, you could dig up, if you get a square shovel, you know, dig up a little square carefully. You can lay it on its side right there in the lawn and just kind of look through the, the root mass. You'll find, you'll see pictures of them right on there. They're kind of tan or grayish color. You'll find the larva right there. You know, if I got a brown, brown place, I usually try to dig up half green, half brown because they're probably continuing to head to the fresh roots. Look at that, you find them in there, you'll, you've got crane fly larva and then you can kind of make your choice how you want to attack it, okay? Um, crane fly is a nasty little creature. I mean, if you walk away, um, if they're happy in your soil, they'll eat your whole lawn. You're gonna walk out and see massive brown areas that are done that you gotta literally scratch up and start over again with all this process. They'll, they'll eat, you're not gonna get your grass to, to come back if we have crane fly larva down there, all right? So if you don't know what they look like, look for those, they're kind of like a mosquito on steroids slash a daddy long leg spider. And she just kind of skims across the grass in the evening, early morning when it's cool. I, I walk out in the yard every day before I go to work and say, ooh, there's one right there and stop them, stop her from laying more eggs. Uh, but nobody to me is immune to crane fly. That's one that, is, you know, insects are always kind of cyclical a little bit, but um, they're going to get into your, your turf here once, 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 sooner or later, all right? So the last couple things you'll see on the sheet there, you know, <clears throat> if you're starting over, you can talk to me after class. I mean, if you're like, I'm done, I bought a house, I'm ripping it out and doing my own thing. You know, we, I can give you some tips after class. The two things I would mention are A, you know, any house that gets built by a contractor, anything I've seen in the last 10 years is gonna have a garbage lawn for long term. Those guys put down an inch of soil, they drive their track hoe over that thing, building your beautiful house, they put down an inch of good dirt, lay sod down for you, and then walk away. And you're like, sweet, my yard looks great. And then within one year, they're over here from that development, that development, all these developments, what's wrong with my lawn? You don't have any soil, they put down garbage soil, sod on top of it and it's got nowhere to go and it's going to peter out so it's always about the soil i mean we could be doing this class on vegetables roadies i don't care what you don't have good soil you're not going to have a good lawn so i'm in the same boat you know i bought a 50s house in Everett. i spent four or five years doing this all and ah, it'll get better and look better for a while and then crash again until i just said you know what i'm done with it i'm not going to mess with this forever took out all the saw that was there, rototilled, added soil, did all the stuff I could, built myself a base to have great grass. I haven't touched it now in over 15 years since all that work was done and it's been happy as can be. So I need, you know, six, eight inches of good soil to get a lawn to grow. Not two, but six or eight. That's gonna give me drainage, it's gonna give me a space to have a deeper root system, which means less water, and I'm gonna have a happier, happier lawn that way. So keep in mind, if you are starting over, it's about not a huge amount of money, but it's about time. You really want um, the good soil in there. That's what I would spend my money on is high quality soil to build the base, and then we can go out a different direction. The second half of that um, you'll see is seed versus sod. Now, if I'm applying seed down, you know, if I come by these little, there's a little two pound bag. We measure, we, we do bulk. We can measure whatever pounds you need, put it in a bag for you and send you home. If I'm overseeding my lawn after I do any amount of work we've talked about, I only need a pound or two of this per thousand square feet. So you're talking about like eight bucks. I mean, minimal cost at all. If I do a new lawn, maybe I need five or six pounds per thousand square feet. So you're still talking about, you know, 30, 40 bucks for a, a thousand square feet is not much. I go buy sod, you know, we're talking thousands of dollars to purchase sod and you're gonna inherit a fiberglass mesh net that is there for all eternity and nothing drives me crazier than like oh let me come help you I'll, we'll fix this and you go wait a minute i can't do anything because i can't even rip your sod out 
because it's got fiberglass over your entire property from the saw. So yes, it's instant gratification, but I would really try to talk you into saving the money. You can live with a month is all we're talking. Instant sod, great, I got grass tomorrow um, that I still gotta water and feed and do all the same stuff with, you know, or I spend way less money doing seed and I've got just a month to watch it grow, get established, and then I've got the same, same lawn down the road too. And you can control what's in your seed versus calling whoever sod farm and saying, I'll take a thousand square feet. You don't know what it is. Um, I'll tell you with sod farms, because um, I've visited a few, I think that is where your crane fly larva and your thatch disease tends to start. You know, a sod farm is going to be, if I'm a crane fly or a little fungus spore that likes turf, that's the first place I'm going. I got free reign on grass. So watch for your sod, or if you've got to buy some, really ask some questions. How long has this been cut? Do you treat for disease and insects? Is it healthy? Really look at it before you before you take sod, because I've seen some pretty crummy sod around the area. Um, next one is moles, okay? And I don't have a magic answer for moles for you. Who's fighting moles? Probably everybody's fighting a mole. I knock on wood, because I'm lucky. I'm on a little knoll, and for some reason they don't come up my banks and get into my yard, or I'd probably be war on. I fight raccoons is what's destroying my lawn these days. Um, so we've got a couple different ways to attack moles. Now you'll see, um, I brought two things in here. We have traps, you know, I'll tell you right now, if you want to get red in the face and you want to watch a mole bleed, we have some traps, you can catch them and do what you want with them. I kind of chuckle because it's, it's actually illegal in the state of Washington to trap a mole. I don't think the sheriff's ever going to come I'll write you a ticket for getting a mole, but we have traps in there. We're allowed to sell them, but and you're allowed to buy them, but you're not supposed to use them, which makes no sense to me at all. But anyway, that's a different story. So that's obviously one option. You want to get blue in the face and figure out how to not cut your finger off with a trap and get them in the right place and you can catch them. Um, I try to tell people, try repellent. You know, apologize to your neighbor or don't tell them. But if you can do this right, you can send them to the Joneses next door and they'll be out of your yard. Um, Molebax is a is a castor oil particle. You can't go buy a, a bottle of liquid castor oil. It doesn't work, I tried. This is encapsulated in clay, just a little tiny ball with castor oil in it. If you have a mole, whether it's in the bed or the lawn, and you see them actively in tunnels, we put mole max down. Maybe it's a third of that lawn, okay? We wait a week, then we go out another third. We wait another week, then we go out to the property perimeter. And the mole, <coughs> will start going away from that smell. So the point is, is we get him here, we try to get him there, and then we try to get him to the neighbor's fence. And then we could always apply this around the edge to hopefully keep him from coming back in. Is it 100%? Absolutely not. You know, I've had some people say, yeah, great. I poured a, I spilled a part of that bag, and that's where he came up with this mole hole the next time. Other people, it, you know, it's, it's, it was unbelievable. I can't believe I haven't seen one in here in five years now, you know, kind of thing. So it's just something to try. I mean, that's almost like trap. Do I try a repellent? You know, and then, you know, do I try a little sonic device? You know, something I can plug in the ground. This vibrates in the, in the soil. They don't care for the noise. You know, again, I've had a lot of people out in the home which come back and say, man, I put those things around my yard. It's been unbelievable. Then you get one person comes down. Yeah, I put those in. That's where he dug his hill up where the, where the spike was. So. Again, is it 100%, but I think it, it's something to consider worth a try. Um, you know, we don't do gassers, you know, poison baits. We can, you can find all those in other places too. And again, if you do it right with the mole, it's, it's always the key of finding where it's active. Where's that hill where he's moving and find that tunnel system because then we can get these things in the right place and probably win. If you just walk out and, you know, throw some castor oil out in the yard, you're probably not going to have much luck. You know, we got to figure out where he's at first. Yeah. What about if you have a deck what's that you have the deck okay that is maybe that high up yep yep the ground yep they seem to be under there. under there okay well I, I i don't carry it but i believe bonite still makes it um you can find that in a spray in a, okay. in, a in a ready to spray bottle um if you can't find it let me know and i'll look and see if i can ship you a bottle i think they still make it but that's something the same active idea that you could probably go up above your deck 
and spray that down through the slats and get it down into that surface soil and try to get them out from underneath there. Mm -hmm. I built a strawberry kind of stair. Uh huh. Do I get underneath that? Try to get underneath all. If they're underneath there, try to get the whole thing treated. Yeah, you're, you're, this isn't going to hurt. You know, again, people, pets, other plants, berries, it's not going to hurt anything at all. There's no chemical in there. But we're just trying to repel that little creature to head a different direction, essentially. Yeah, and then you can wave to the neighbor at the fence and say, sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, the last two things here, you know, again, you, you, you know, I mentioned, you know, I'm an organic guy and I'm not trying to make you feel guilty, but, but if you're, you know, thinking about the environment and all these things, especially if you live stream, lake, sound, waterfront, you know, think about trying some of the organic ways because you can really have nice lawn um, and not have to go the chemical route. Um, and, it, and the second thing I would say, speaking as a male here, um, I don't care if it's organic, chemical, synthetic, read the bag and the label because I, I know I got friends and my dad and other people I know. It, if I buy whatever I buy and I put down twice as much as my need, it's, it's not going to work twice as much. I mean, does that make sense? So if you choose to use a chemical, that's why I like spot spray. Sweet. Do a little spraying. You're not going to really hurt anything. You know, instead of broadcasting death over the entire property, and you probably didn't need it. You know what I mean? So try to do spot spray. Read the labels. You know, making five tablespoons into ten is not going to make it twice as effective. You're just adding, again, more chemical into the environment. Um, and it's the same thing with the lawn food. You know, I break the rule every year, to be honest with you, because I'm like, yeah, I got 2,000 square feet. Some years it's one bag. Sometimes I'll put down two bags in the spring. You know, if it's looking a little tired coming out of winter, I'm never going to burn with something organic or fertilizer or hurt anything. If I put down double scots, I'll probably torch my lawn and I'll have to go back and start over again. You know, the synthetic nitrogen is just too much. So that's probably the one. You can say, boy, I really am looking a little off color. I really want to give this thing a kick. And usually for me, it's in spring. Um, that's what I did this year was do a double dose, which probably kept me from having to do it here in the summer. Um, you know, you're okay doing that, but not with the synthetic and not with the other products we're talking about up here. You don't need to waste your money, uh, your time, and, and put too much of that down. All right? So is that lawn class overload? You know, this is always a, always a fun class because I love my turf. Um, you know, I kind of get upset because I see all kinds of stuff online. You know, don't go grass. I'm going to plant clover instead. You know, do what you want to do. It's your yard. It's not mine. Um, I like some nice green grass to kick the ball with my sons. You know, go take a nap in the shade in the summertime, whatever you want to do. But um, you don't have to spend as much time as you think. And I think you really can get away uh, with going the natural route.